Hi, my name is Jesse Richman, and I, like many of you, have basically had my ophthalmology practice shut down due to the coronavirus. We all have urgent patients who we know still need occasional checkups, but there are so many of our patients who we think are stable, but we really don't have an objective way of assessing them right now when they're at home and can't come to the office for a checkup. Dr. George Spath and I developed an internet-based contrast sensitivity test called SPARKS that can be used for patients to monitor their vision at home. SPARKS has been tested and validated in patients with glaucoma, macular degeneration, cataracts, and controls at several academic institutions in the United States, Italy, Brazil, New Zealand, and India. We are now making SPARKS available for people to use at home so clinicians can monitor their patients when they can't come to the office for a checkup. The initial step is going to the physician registration page on our website, sparkscontrastcenter.com slash register.php. Please fill out your information, make sure your email address is accurate, and choose a username and password you'll remember. Please review the terms of use prior to clicking the register button. Once you have registered, you'll probably want to click the link to see your account, but you have to log in first. You can then, once you've logged in, make sure your information is accurate and start registering your patients to be able to take Sparks at their home. Enroll your patient in Sparks by clicking the Patient ID button and then click New Patient. Fill out their information and then click Submit. This page was originally designed for clinical trials. If you are a clinician not interested in research, what you really need to record is the 10 digit ID number assigned to your patient. If you would like to be able to compare the SPARKS results to other ophthalmic measures, then please fill out the information below and then select Click to add new values. To add additional patients, simply click the button New Patient in the top right. Next, contact your patient, give them their ID number, and tell them to go to the SPARKS website for patients. SparksContrastCenter.com slash PatientHome.php Now they are ready to assess their vision at home. I would also recommend that they watch the patient-oriented video about Sparks prior to using it. Let's go over how Sparks works and how to interpret the results. The test itself establishes a patient's contrast sensitivity both centrally and peripherally. The test is performed one eye at a time, and there should be normal lighting in the room without glare. Patients should take sparks in as similar surroundings as possible each time so that the results can be compared over time. After a patient logs in with the ID number you gave them, they can either take a practice test or go right to the real test. If it's their first time, I'd encourage patients to take the practice test as most patients have a slight learning curve with taking sparks. Patients should review the instructions page before taking the test. When the test starts, patients need to identify the area that looks different. Vertical contrast gratings will briefly appear either centrally or in one of the four peripheral areas tested. After selecting the area that looks different, patients need to click the central area to activate the test to show the next image. This ensures fixation during the test and makes sure patients are ready for the next image. The test proceeds by having the contrast gratings appear in a random pattern and a bracketing technique is used to establish threshold values in each of the areas tested. The scores are log based and then converted to a scale where each of the five areas has a potential score of 20, making a perfect total score 100. You can review your patient's test results by logging in and then clicking data review. The patient's information is de-identified for their protection so you need to keep track of their ID numbers. While we have a normative database for Sparks, please be very aware that the scores of controls and those with early eye disease sometimes overlap. You can look at this box plot with controls, glaucoma suspects, and glaucoma patients and clearly see a difference in the average scores of each group, but there is some overlap. Most people with good vision score above 70 for their total score, 
and above 14 for the scores in their individual areas. Like many other visual tests, SPARC scores are influenced by age as scores tend to decline with older age. This figure shows a scatter plot of the total SPARC scores and controls in our normative database study. The repeatability of the total SPARC score when subjects took the test twice in the same day was about plus or minus 10. This means that if a subsequent total score is more than 10 points different from a prior test, there is a 95% likelihood that the change in the score is real. This does not mean that a real change cannot occur if the change is less than the test retest repeatability. For example, in a prospective longitudinal study involving sparks, a decrease in the total spark score by 5.6 points after one year was predictive of rapid glaucoma progression. One of the real values of people testing their vision at home with sparks is that it is easy for them to repeat the test. Often in the office, if we think a test result may be changing but we're not sure, we ask them to come back in a few weeks and repeat it. By testing at home with sparks, you can ask your patient to repeat the test more conveniently. You can ask a patient to take sparks several times over a few days to cluster their information, which should help you be more confident in determining if someone is stable or getting worse. If you would like to review the clinical trials involving sparks, please do a PubMed search with the keywords sparks and spathe.